Welcome back to Let's Talk. Glad to have you here. Hope you enjoyed this episode as well. We are continuing on the theme, Living with Pain. Our focus for the last two episodes and for this episode as well is living with financial pain. We stopped on the point asking how to save your family from financial ruin. The first point given by the prophet, which is given to you as well, is to go borrow. We spoke about what good debt was. We spoke about what bad debt was. And we showed that what the prophet asked of her in borrowing was not too much out of the way. If things had gone horribly wrong, it would have been easy for her to give back what she borrowed. Today, we're going to go a little further. We're going to speak about going home. So first, the prophet told her to go borrow. Then he told her to go home. Verse 4, 2 Kings chapter 4 says, And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. I hope you realize that this was a family matter, and the prophet instructed her to go home. She needed to shut all others out and to deal with this at home with her sons. We too need to seek to sort things out at home and not turn outside at the first sign of difficulty. So he told her to go borrow. He told her to go home. He also told her to go poor. In verse 5 of our passage, it reads, So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. At this point, you need to figure out what you have in the house and what you can do with it. What do you have in the house? The way that we are speaking about, she had oil in the house. She recognized that it had value. She mentioned it to her teacher and he told her what to do with it. Now, you may have things in the house that you could use to help rescue you and your family from financial ruin. Do you have pots? Are you good at cooking? Do you get compliments for the things you cook? Maybe you could cook for others. Do you have wrenches or hammers or other tools? Are you good with tools? You're good with your hands. Maybe you're good with building things or repairing things. You could help and serve others in this regard. Do you have an oven? Maybe you like to bake. Try out your treats on others. Test it out on them if they like it. Others may like it so much that they would be willing to pay for it as well. Do you have a vehicle? Maybe you could be a personal driver. Maybe you could do deliveries. We're looking at different things that you may have at home that you probably didn't think much about that you have in your possession and you could use to help rescue yourself and your family from financial pain. Do you have a computer, a laptop, or a tablet? There are so many things computers and laptops and tablets could be used for to earn money. Do you have a cell phone? You could go live. You could record motivational videos. Maybe you got some knowledge that you believe could help others. Put it together, record some videos, send it out to folks. People will be willing to pay for those type of things. Maybe you got a mop or a washing machine at home and you like to clean. I asked this a few um, weeks ago concerning cleaning. And it seemed like a lot of people don't like to clean. So if a lot of people don't like to clean, that means there are few people that like to clean. Maybe you're one who likes to clean, clean for others. We're talking about getting out of dire circumstances, rescuing your family from financial pain. I'm not talking about a long-term career. Maybe for a season, you go ahead and you clean for others in order to allow yourself time to, to get out of where you are. You got a dog, maybe you like dogs. You could be a dog walker or a dog sitter. Maybe you love animals. Maybe you could take care of animals for people. Is God setting you up for a business? We need to give God something to bless, something to multiply, not just a job. At times we need to go further. God has given all of us skills and abilities, and a job is not often the best place for you to fully utilize these skills and abilities. So look around you. Look at what you have in the house and pour it out so others could benefit from it. The next thing the prophet told her was to go and sell. We need to pay attention to the fact that this lady was, it seemed like she was extremely obedient. She went, 
She sought for some help. The prophet told her what to do. She went. She did it. He didn't tell her the entire thing or the full view of it from beginning to end. He told her what she needed to do at that point. She went and she did it. After she did it, she came back and she told him, hey, I did it. Then he told her the next step. Sometimes we don't get the breakthrough that we want because we don't want to take step one before we figure out what step 10 is. We need to be obedient, go and do what needs to be done as soon as we're told. 2 Kings 4, 7 says, Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children on the rest. What you have and what you can do is valuable to someone else and they need to know about it. If you have a solution to someone else's problem, it is in both person's best interest for you to tell them about it. Learn to sell. It is one of the best lessons you could learn. Selling is all around us. Single people sell each other on the idea that it would be good for them to be in a relationship. Then they sell each other on the idea that it would be good for them to get married. Job seekers sell employers on the idea that it would be good to hire them. Car salespersons sell you on the idea and the belief that you cannot get by without getting the new car that they're selling. If you're afraid to start selling, here's what you can do. Start with samples. Test your abilities on a few trusted people. Let's take a baker, for example. Bake that dessert and give it to a few close friends and see if they live. If they live to tell the story and they also enjoy what you provided, then you could take it a little further and try selling it to people that you probably don't know. Another example, take that cell phone, take that camera, go online, make a few videos to see if there's any positive feedback. If you do get positive feedback, then you hey, you're probably onto something. Give it a try again. Go broader. Go further. Let others know. Another example could be work alongside someone else for a few days as a helper to see if you can really provide help. These are just some ways you could get started in selling. The fifth point he mentioned to her was to go and pay. So let's do a little bit of a recap, making sure that you remember all that was told to her. How to save your family from financial ruin. For us, the prophet told her to go borrow. After going to borrow, he told her to go home. Then he told her to go poor. After that, he said to go sell. And after selling, he told her to go and pay. After the proceeds from the sales start rolling in, remember why you started selling in the first place. Because of the debt. Pay off the debt. Pay what you owe. In this entire process with the widow, God was at work. He used this matter to show her that by her obedience, most of her problems would be taken care of. And finally, he told her to go and live. Quick recap again. So number one, how to save your family from financial ruin? Go borrow. Number two, go home. Number three, go poor. Number four, go sell. Number five, go pay. And six, and final, go live. Now, the last step in this list of instruction was to go live off the rest. Business was booming. It was so good that her proceeds from selling the oil paid off all the debt she had. And she and her sons could have lived off of what was left over. Our God is a God of abundance. He didn't just supply for her to pay off the debt and that alone be taken care of. He provided more than enough to pay off the debt and for her and her sons to live off of the rest. Ephesians 3.20 reads, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. In this example, the widow was obedient to the instructions of her teacher, which were instructions from God. The obedience led to her pains being removed or at least reduced. 
her spiritual pain would have disappeared as God showed up for her and her faith must have grown. Her maternal anguish was now non-existent as the creditors, nor no one else, had any right to take away her sons. Her physical pain would have melted away as she could now sleep soundly and the tension headaches would be gone. Even her emotional pain, the pain of missing her husband, would have been reduced. It's not that she would miss him less, but life would now have been a little easier despite him not being around. Thank you for listening to this episode. These portions were concerning financial pain, and we're going to move on to another type of pain in our next episode. So I invite you to come back and tune in once more to Let's Talk.